My classroom teacher was a German woman called Miss Kitchinger. She spoke with a German accent, and I spoke with a broad Lancashire accent. We did not hit it off, and I was hopeless at reading the flashcards. It seemed as though I was singled out and proved to be a dunce, as I could not really read. Being small, I messed about to divert attention from my inability to do classwork. One day when I arrived at school, I found a pair of plimpsoles or pumps on the desk. They call them plimpsoles now. Which I later found out belonged to Vivian, the girl that lost me when I went across the park. And I did not like these plimpsoles being on my desk. Feeling rather indignant, I placed them in the rubbish bin. I think I might have asked the teacher, please miss, whose are these pumps? But I was ignored. She did not understand me. So, in the bin, they went. The next day, Vivian's mother came to school, wanting to find out where the plimpsoles had gone. The caretaker said he'd found them on the floor and placed them on this boy's desk. When I was questioned, I was in trouble. And Miss Kitzinger said my mum would have to buy a new pair of plimpsoles as I had thrown them in the bin. I felt this unfair and felt really picked on. I know my mum came to the school and had an argument about the pumps. And the fact that the German teacher was trying to teach English to me and I couldn't understand her because I came from the north, she was very indignant. This was only a few years after the World War with Germany had ended. I realised I could not read at the age of six years old, and this definitely showed up itself in class when we had to read the flashcards. When it was my turn, I just could not tell what was written, and I felt embarrassed. It was humiliating. As a result, I felt the need to distract the attention from any action that involved me reading, and I caused a disturbance of some kind. I was known as a naughty boy, and to top it all, the kids mocked my northern accent. At that time, my mum had to work late, and it was arranged for me to wait in the classroom after school until my mum came to pick me up. This was shortly after the event with the plimpsoles. The class had a pet hamster, and this was kept in a little cage at the front of the class, and it got all the attention from everyone. I was the one that got no attention, but rather got into trouble. One evening, Whilst I was waiting in the classroom for my mum to come to collect me, the teacher left the classroom for a short while, leaving me alone in the classroom. I went towards the Hampton's cage and thought to myself, why do you get all the attention? I know what I'm going to do. I took the hamster out of the cage, closed the door. I looked at the hamster in the eyes and went over to Vivian's desk and put it inside her desk, shutting it the lid quickly, thinking that will pay her back for getting me into trouble with her plimpsoles. I sat back in my chair before the teacher returned. I went home with my mum that night as though nothing had happened. The next day I went into class as quiet as I could and keeping out of the way. I waited patiently for the eruptions. Then suddenly, oh miss, screamed Vivian, the hamster's in my desk. It had nibbled everywhere, nibbled the books, done a wee wee wee, everywhere, all over the book and made a lovely mess. Throughout the night, everyone gathered round the desk to see at that time. I felt very guilty. One boy tried to suggest the hamster had escaped and climbed up the table leg and through the hole that was drilled in the bottom of the desk for the spilt ink to drain. A good idea, I thought, so keep thinking that, I thought. Then someone asked how did it get out of the cage as the door was closed. I was feeling very, very guilty now and wondered if Miss Kitchinger was thinking had I done it and done the deed the night before. I kept quiet and to this day they don't know how that hamster got there. During this time my brother was attending Lee Farm Junior School, the school that I was to attend in the next few years. And that's the story of the naughty boy called David and the Hamster.